Agora para o Matheus, é, que é advogado na Itália, que vai falar um pouco para a gente sobre litigation funding, como é que funciona é, isso na Itália, se já está assim, um mercado maior hoje do que a gente já tem aqui no Brasil. Thank you, Laura. Um, I wish, I wish to, first of all, I wish to uh, thank Dr. Andrade for this opportunity to speak at this uh, uh, very, very prestigious school. And uh, special thanks to Otto for having invited me at this uh, stimulating seminar. Uh, so let me let me open my brief speech uh, with a few uh, general remarks on third-party litigation funding. Uh, third-party funding involves uh, a third party financing the legal representation of a party in a case uh, as an alternative uh, to uh, the party self-financing uh, the legal representation or receiving attorney financing through uh, a contingent uh, or a conditional fee agreement. So it's, a, it's an alternative. If the funded party is the plaintiff, uh, then the third party uh, entity contracts Uh, to receive a percentage or a fraction of the proceeds uh, from, from the case um, uh, or a multiple of the funds invested if the plaintiff wins, uh, wins the case. In economic terms, uh, this kind of funding is, is essentially an investment, is a pure investment which is made uh, by a third party Um, in, in a litigation or arbitration case that it views as, as a business opportunity. Uh, the investment is based on, on, on the funders' own assessment, independent assessment, of the chances of success uh, of that specific claim. Um, And that claim will be uh, brought by the claimant in its, no, in its own name. And this is a, a, a big difference uh, uh, with uh, the alternative like uh, the, the assigned, the sale of the, uh, of the, of, of the litigation claim to, to a third party. That is, that is an alternative option. The leading jurisdiction worldwide uh, in terms of volume, sophistication, and regulation uh, of, uh, of third party funding uh, arrangement are uh, Australia, uh, the United States, the United Kingdom, and, uh, and Germany. There are other, um, let's say, jurisdictions in Europe where Uh, where the, the, the litigation funding is, uh, uh, is, is, is quite, uh, is quite uh, common, like, um, for example, uh, Austria. Um, this means that uh, uh, in the past, uh, third-party funding was, was a smaller niche uh, market. Uh, Uh, but uh, recently, uh, third-party funding is, is a fast-growing phenomenon and the source of, uh, of debates uh, in, uh, in, uh, on a number of issues in various jurisdictions, including uh, uh, Italy, uh, where, where the, the, the topic now is, uh, is, is quite uh, hot, and other jurisdictions in uh, uh, countries of continental uh, Europe. On, uh, in, in, in generally speaking, uh, uh, a few more remarks. Uh, I think that there are three uh, global forces driving uh, uh, the sharp increase uh, in the demand for dispute financing. Uh, the first uh, is uh, the, uh, uh, let's say, public policy ideal of, increases, of increasing access to justice uh, for, for 
for plaintiffs uh, who otherwise could not uh, afford to pursue uh, a, a meritorious claim. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, so some, some uh, <clears throat> Uh, authors, but even judges, uh, uh, ha ha uh, speak uh, about uh, a possible social benefit of third-party litigation funding. Uh, there is a, a statement from, from, from a New York judge saying uh, that litigation funding uh, allows uh, uh, lawsuits to be decided on the merits. And, and not based on which party uh, has deeper pockets or stronger appetite for, for uh, protracted litigation as a, as a, as a uh, defensive uh, strategy. Uh, another force uh, is the slew of companies seeking uh, a, a means uh, to pursue a claim or defend against the claim uh, uh, while also maintaining uh, enough uh, cash flow to continue conducting, conducting business as usual. And this is a very, uh, a very uh, typical need uh, when uh, we, we are talking about distressed uh, companies in, in, uh, in the phase of, of restructuring. A third force is the, is the uh, uh, let's say, worldwide market uncertainty in recent years uh, which has inspired financial institutions, uh, investors, banks, uh, hedge funds uh, to seek uh, alternative investment, investment that uh, are not directly linked or linked to or, 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 or affected by uh, the volatile and, uh, and uh, unpredictable uh, financial markets. So I think these are the driving uh, forces uh, uh, that, that support these uh, uh, the, the, uh, the growth of, 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 this, uh, of this phenomenon. Um, moving forward to the uh, moving forward to, 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 the, uh, to the insolvency context, uh, uh, litigation finance in, uh, in, uh, in bankruptcy in insolvency proceedings can be seen as a, as a tool to unlock uh, value for creditors. Uh, for, for, for creditors of, uh, of uh, a bankrupt entity, uh, legal claims held by the estate uh, can be a valuable source of recovery. So these claims uh, come, come in all shapes uh, and, and sizes, uh, but typically uh, we, we, we can mention avoidance, uh, clawback actions, uh, um, as Renata did, uh, we can mention uh, um, we can mention uh, uh, di director and officer uh, liability. We can mention uh, professional mal malpractice uh, and generally also other um, um, co commercial dispute. Um, but uh, irrespective of uh, of uh, the, um, the, na the the nature litigation claims. Uh, for, for, for the bankruptcy, uh, for the bankrupt estate uh, are basically assets, are assets uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, ma and uh, the maximizing the value uh, of, of every asset, in including those assets, uh, is, is, is in the best interest of creditors. So basically, uh, uh, litigation, uh, litigation finance in bankruptcy can be a, a valuable uh, and, and useful tool. Um, there are many, many uh, cases, instances in which, uh, in which a bankruptcy estate lacks the financial resources required to pursue uh, litigation. Uh, uh, one of them could be the fact that uh, um, that there are secure lender that uh, are funding uh, the are funding the, the, the bankruptcy with cash collateral uh, or or providing a, a debtor in possession loan. Um, in that case, of course, the there is little incentive uh, for the secure lender to fund. Uh, uh, litigation uh, that uh, that uh, uh, typically 
uh, only accrues to the benefit of the unsecured creditor. So if the secure creditor or the DIP lenders uh, has a leading role, uh, of course, they have no interest to, uh, to, to, to improve the recovery to the benefit of only of the unsecured creditors. Um, there are several contexts in bankruptcy or insolvency cases where the third party litigation finance uh, can be, can be uh, needed. Uh, one is uh, that uh, the, the, um, the funder um, uh, may, may, might be uh, already uh, present in a debt, or debt structure uh, as a pre-petition secure or unsecure um, um, creditor. Uh, and and I, I'm, I'm referring to the cases where the third party litigation finance uh, was uh, provided uh, before the opening of the insolvency proceeding. And uh, uh, in exchange for that, the, 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 the funder uh, acquire an interest in, in litigation proceeds or other assets if uh, he has received uh, collateral for, for his, uh, his financing. Or um, the need may, may, uh, may, may be present once uh, the bankruptcy case uh, has begun and a debtor in possession may obtain the, the, the financing uh, uh, from, from the third party in order to finance uh, critical post-petition litigation. That's another case. Or, uh, in, in some jurisdictions, uh, um, like in the US, but also in other jurisdictions, there could be the case where a post-confirmation creditor uh, trust uh, created under the reorganization plan may need and use uh, third-party uh, litigation finance uh, uh, to pursue its claims because it can happen that uh, the, the, the trust uh, has not uh, sufficient resources, own resources to, 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 go, to go ahead with the litigation. So uh, litigation finance uh, in, in these cases uh, is, can be an, an obvious uh, solution uh, to solve the problem, to solve the liquidity problem. In certain cases, uh, uh, a litigation funder uh, can also monetize a claim in a different way uh, um, um, in order to provide immediate cash uh, to, to the debtor and uh, remove the, uh, the, 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 the ongoing burden of uh, funding the case. And we, I, will, uh, I will mention a, a specific case uh, if I have time in, in, in a couple of minutes. Couple of minutes. Okay. <laughs> then we have uh, uh, then we have a lot of controversial issues uh, um, e related to, to uh, third party litigation finance. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, the conflict of laws issue uh, in assessing the role and, and, and the limit of the third party funding. And there could be uh, at least three different laws applicable, like the law governing the insolvency proceeding, the law governing the funding agreement, and the law governing uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the underlying litigation claim uh, being funded. Um, there are also uh, controversial ethical and legal issues uh, worldwide uh, that uh, probably uh, need to be uh, regulated in, in some way. Uh, I refer to the attorney uh, role in a third party fa funding uh, uh, arrangement. Uh, and, uh, here there is a, the, the, the big issue of the Champerty uh, doctrine. Um, there is uh, another controversial uh, issue is how much influence the funder may uh, have over the legal representation, uh, whether attorneys may refer uh, their client to funders, uh, conflict of interest uh, uh, involving the attorney funder and the attorney client uh, uh, relationships, uh, the possible disclosure of third party funding arrangement to the court or, and, and also in some cases to the, to the opposing side. 
the thunder influence uh, over uh, settlement negotiation. This is a very uh, important uh, uh, issue to be, to be addressed and maybe also regulated. The possible waiver of the attorney-client uh, privilege for documents and information disclosed to the funder. Um, so, and, and I, uh, a, a, a few more remarks, just uh, uh, more specific, uh, one minute, okay. more, more focus on the, uh, on, on, the, on the funding provided to, to company that are under insolvency proceedings. So there is uh, the impact of bankruptcy law and insolvency proceedings on uh, the decision to enter into the funding agreement. Uh, so, uh, for example, in Italy, uh, of course, it, the, the, the approval for, from from uh, the approval of the court is needed, but is also needed a prior opinion and involvement uh, in some way of the uh, creditors uh, through the creditors committee. Uh, there is a. Uh, Again, the decision to settle the claim, uh, special rules uh, may be needed uh, owing to the presence of the funder. Uh, th there is the, 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 the very important uh, uh, conflict between the fiduciary duties of the trustee and the, uh, and the, and the, the need to control uh, uh, the litigation by the funder. And so, uh, uh, this, this explains why other alternatives are, uh, are often used, uh, at least in Italy, but it's the same, uh, um, there was the, ca the case that I will not, uh, I will not mention <laughs> in the US, uh, where the parties uh, uh, prefer to a, a sale of claim uh, to, to funder in, in return for immediate or the fair payment uh, as an alternative to litigation funding. Thank you. Thank you, Matteo. I'm sorry. I, I would love to discuss.